Icy Cavern, I find the skeletal remnants of what looks to be a mountain goat. Yet I'm still not convinced. So I have the bones sent to a lab where they're examined by experts, and they're dated between five and six centuries earlier. Now, what would you think if at this point I sat down with these villagers and shared that I still had reservations? Sure, they were mountain goats, but how am I to really know that the ancestors actually went up and hunted them? Perhaps they were only able to finally domesticate them as some ventured down the mountain and near the people who were able to ensnare them. They may have been telling the truth about the goats themselves, but maybe the hunts never really occurred. What would you say of me, dear friend, if I now said to these villagers, I want to find a skeleton with an arrowhead within it, and then after finding that demanded, I need to see a skeleton with a spear inside it, and then upon finding that holler crazily, I must now see a skeleton with a spear thrust into it, clutched by the skeleton of one of your forefathers, otherwise I will never ever believe your ancestors hunted these mountain goats. What would you think of me? Would you think me a fool? Would you say I was stark raving mad? You should think of that, or excuse me, you should think that of me and say that of me because it would be true. But this is the very sort of thing one witnesses when they see secular scholarship deny the realness of God and the truthfulness of the Holy Bible. They say, well, in spite of the existing evidence, this cannot be true because there first must be more evidence to prove it as true. But how much more do they need? Time and again, when faced with such evidence, they then cry aloud in unison, we now need more evidence. And it sadly does not cease. My dear friend, I truly hope that you do not remain in this camp. I pray that as more and more of this evidence is presented to you alongside quotations of intellectually brilliant people who themselves believe in the scriptures, that you are humbly permitting yourselves to accept it. We went through before we begin so that you would be mentally prepared to look at this evidence with right lenses. And I hope that you are. We're not even close to done part four, but I hope that you are gathering and holding on to the evidence to weigh it all collectively rather than trying to pick it apart and dismiss it piecemeal. That will serve you no good. Continuing my confession, it is wearisome to write and research and come across statement after statement of decried denial of God and his word by people who see the evidence laid before them, but whose hearts are hard against God and unwilling to submit to him. Worse is seeing the invisible sheath of darkness brought on by the demonic spiritual bodies which rule over such people and bring about this darkness, having their way with them and keeping them blinded to the truth and goodness of God. But I press on in faith and belief that this work will be used because I know that God is good, and that he is real, and that he is as he's revealed himself to be in his word, and that that word is trustworthy and true. I know that he has purposed me for this task and made a way that I could complete it while he brings it to fruition. And I know that God uses the truth to set people free and he will use the evidences herein to chip away at the intellectual barriers this world and the evil spirits who govern it have worked to establish before the minds of many spiritually lost people in order that the glory of God would seemingly be diminished. Rather than rally against God and his word and the evidence, these scoffers and scholars who make their pronouncements should be crying out, Forgive me, God. I am a sinner in the sight of a holy, holy, holy God. Please be merciful with me and help me to believe in your good gift given freely out of love that I may be saved and have eternal life and give all the rest of my days as an offering pleasing and useful to you. Not only do we have these scrolls that date back so far, but we have different types of evidence going back even further. The reason we don't have an abundance of scrolls is simply because they do not last. That we even have these scrolls made of a metallic silver substance that can last is amazing enough in itself. In fact, had some sort of tectonic force not caused the ceiling of that tomb to fall and conceal all of those ancient artifacts, they would have surely been plundered or reused or recycled way back in the past. But just as God miraculously amazingly and sovereignly hid and preserved through providence the Dead Sea Scrolls, he did the same with the Silver Scrolls of Ketef Hinnom. Friend, when you see such grand, obviously orchestrated coincidences, know that the hand of God has surely been at work. Praise God for that.
Thanks for listening to this video, and I hope that it blesses you. Please do share with others so they may have the opportunity to understand this incredible truth. Be blessed.